they could have been taken out of this expansion pack and nobody would have noticed. Yes, they would have because we need Yastola here to see like two or three things out of the entire giant 80 item list because two or three of those things are very implor important, are very important for her development later with her plot she's going to get back to runar we have to have her here and graha needs to be here because he specializes in a lot of the magic that's used right now i do really <laughs> why are these two the characters being singled out it's set up it's set up for shit that's coming let's actually sit down and watch this because it's been a week that i've been trying to watch this video on stream and i have not been able to because we keep talking about other shit. The new Dawn Trail expansion to Final Fantasy XIV was so hotly anticipated, particularly because this was the beginning after the end. The previous expansion, Endwalker, took a decade-long story and managed to wrap it up in a wonderful finale that left people wondering where they would go next. And where they would go next is to a Realm Reborn style world building to allow us to build up to another Endwalker at some point. And people don't understand that, and people keep throwing fits about that for some stupid reason that I do not understand. Something, something, cop out take of low, uh, low attention span TikTok brain. I don't know. I don't think it's that simple, but. I get it. That's no easy feat. You completed the main story and have to start something new from there. That's going to be tough. But as the internet loves to worship and idolize, if there is one man that could follow it up and knock it out of the park, it's Yoshi P. And let me tell you, he did not. Dawn Trail is by far the weakest of all iterations of Final Fantasy IV. 14. I wouldn't even call it lukewarm. It's closer to like Greg warm. It underwhelms, it's unengaging, and sidelines the player character to a fundamental NPC who exists only to solve the actual main character's problems. And these I <sighs> Okay, I'm not gonna comment on the si being sidelined part because I wanna see if he'll go into it. I disagree with saying that it's the weakest. I'm so. If anyone is gonna say this is weaker than a Realm Reborn at its strongest, uh, go back and play a Realm Reborn, please, and look at it as a whole. I do. I do not think it's weaker than that. A, a Realm Reborn is still the weakest part of this game. I do not think we're going to be talking to people in a year. Going, yeah, just get through Dawn Trell. The way we go, yeah, just get through a Realm Reborn. <laughs> This take so cold is making things float on magnets. <laughs> <laughs> These problems all come down to the main story, the motivation, the expository world building, underbaked ideas, and let's be honest here, Wook Lamont. All of it comes down to a single key thing, execution, and none of them fired off like they should have. Also, in case it wasn't clear, some story spoilers are going to be throughout. I also want to be... Okay, I'm curious if he's going to have a similar opinion to me with Wook. Uh, I, I've said this on stream multiple times, and by the end of it, I was very much like, yeah, I came around on Wook Lamont, and she, like, she's fine as a character. I still have the same problems with her. I still think she is written to be incredibly... How do I... How do I phrase this? I feel like her emotional state and her emotional intelligence is written to be almost I'm gonna let this come out first uh sound alerts hello there we go <laughs> um I feel like Wook's emotional intelligence and state are both completely subservient to what the script needs at that point in time and we saw it with the cutscenes around the, I think it was, was it the Xbox area? Where it was right afterwards. It was, it was before she gets kidnapped, I think, or right after she gets kidnapped. And there was at least two instances in the story where she was explicitly going, oh, I can't do this. What was me? Like, how can I ever, you know, I'm too weak. How could I ever stand up next to my brothers and blah, blah, blah. And you get an option to tell her as the warrior of light, some form of motivation or some form of encouragement. And her reaction to that is every time the, <laughs> she looks at the camera like, fucking Pedro Pascal does. I 
I love this video. <laughs> can we, can we, maybe we should. Should I add this as like a root? <laughs> should I add this? <laughs> and it can <laughs> should I add this as like a root? I for people that don't know what this is. And it continues to sort of burn, but I've gotten to the point. You should know this too. <laughs> I fucking love this clip. But no, I feel like every time the Warrior of Light tells her something that's encouragement, she goes, yeah, turns to camera or Warrior of Light and goes, you're right. I should do insert whatever you said here. And you know what? I will. And I'm perfectly healthy now. Depression resolved. Issue obliterated. I cannot stand that about her writing in Dontrell. I think it's the part that makes her a weak character because I don't buy Wuklamat's internal constitution. Is a constitution the word I want here? Like her internal confidence in her mindset in the moment seems to just change when the plot needs it to instead of changing in a way that makes sense. A good example would be uh, Hades or Hades, Emmett Selk or Elidibus, where you get to slowly watch them realize that they're incorrect or they have doubts, but they cannot falter from their path. But instead of getting Wuklamat showing these doubts and dealing with them in a way that is over multiple cutscenes, she voices them in a cutscene, and th and then in the same cutscene, her doubt is resolved. Um, without any question, without any issues, there's no tension behind it. She's just, man, I'm depressed. Man, I'm not depressed now. You have solved my issue, main character. Thank you. Dontrell's probably considered weak because it's in incomplete. Like ARR is incomplete without the rest of the expansions. Yeah, that's that's where I am with it. I I think it's unfair to say Dontrell's the weakest. I still stand by my rankings I gave on stream right after we beat it, where I. I think the order I gave it in the terms of emotional gravity and uh, at least an impact for me was I think Dontrell, Shadowbringers, Endwalker, um, uh, Heaven's Word, Stormblood, and then A Realm Reborn. And I still stand by that as far as emotional impact, as far as narrative strength, like Dontrell is above Stormblood um, to just completely. I think A Realm Reborn's at the bottom. Stormblood is second place like second on the tier and then Dontrell and then Endwalker and then Shadowbringers uh, and then Heaven's Word is at the very top for me. But I'm biased towards Heaven's Word because I love that it's presented as a storybook, as a memoir of Edmore, uh, Edmund de Porto. I think it's, I, I just love it. It's why I like Shrek 1 and 2 so much because it opens with a storybook every time and I think it's fantastic clear that while Dontrail's story is subpar, all the gameplay stuff with it is still top-notch. Seriously, these are some of the coolest dungeon bosses that were a blast to fight against for the first time. Also this boss is terrible. I don't care what anybody says. I hate this boss fight. The level 99 eight man trial was actually tough and took me multiple attempts, which quite frankly was really nice to see. The core gameplay of Dawn Trail is still excellent and pops off immediately. The instances are still fun from the get go. Good stuff here, besides the main story quests. Probably the biggest sludge trying to wade through from the start is the world building shoved into every single line of dialogue. I'm not against world building, don't get me wrong. Everything they set up in Turtle is interesting and it's nice to see a widely different style of culture from everywhere else in Eorzea. What isn't good is the way they presented it all. None of I, okay, if I'm hoping he brings up a realm reborn because if we're going to talk about world building, we we have to talk about a realm reborn. If we're going to talk about any of the flaws with Dontrell, you have to look at it in the lens that it's in, which is the first book of a new series. It is the first chunk of new chapters that we're getting to set up a whole new thing after we literally just wrapped up something like it ended end walker was the end you could walk away from ff14 and that's it you there was no cliffhanger at the end of end walker it literally ended with everyone looking at the warrior of light and going what are you gonna do next warrior of light and you go i don't know maybe another adventure or something and then a meteon bird flies off and it says finn in the goddamn sky, basically. Like, that's the end of the story. 
Like this world building is what happened in a realm reborn. It is organic or diegetic or whatever word you want to use to sound like you're smarter than you actually are. It's all exposition constantly spouted out and said to the player instead of letting the player discover anything so that it has context. Without context, it goes in one ear and out the other. There's a part early on where you go to these pillars and you're supposed to click on them to learn more about the history of Tuliolo, which is literally just me reading a textbook. Given people's attention spans these days, that isn't going to land with most of the player base. It's all exacerbated by the app. Okay, I like that part and I... Most of the player base of FF14 are 30 years old plus. They're adults. They're at the youngest 25. They're people that probably are used to reading things and actually consume media that doesn't just TikTok brain them. Like I, 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 I don't know. I disagree with that point too. But this might be the most I'm going to disagree with the video ever on stream. Like I, I understand the possible complaints with Ex the exposition just being constantly thrown at you but as someone who doesn't mind that type of narrative delivery when you're setting up a new big world or like a new big component of something i don't i don't see a problem with it and even just from a narrative perspective i don't i don't think it's inherently the wrong way to present a story's context Especially in an, in an MMO. An MMO that we're used to reading in, by the way, because most of the stuff in the game is unvoiced anyway. I complained about it a lot through Dontrell that things should have been voiced. I complained about it in Shadowbringers that things should be voiced. The only expansion that I don't think I complained too much in was Endwalker because they did voice almost every cutscene that I feel like they should have voiced. Granted, there were probably one or two, but I can't even think of them. I can think of the Shadowbringers cutscenes that made me really upset. The biggest one is probably when Lena is saying goodbye to the Exarch. We don't get that voiced, and I feel like it should have been. But I digress. Absolute cascading deluge of proper nouns spouted off in every single sentence. Like, keep account of how many of these are over-seasoned into the dialogue. You can't go two steps without a single paragraph of someone saying a plethora of names of people you haven't met, places you've never heard of, and titles that are supposed to mean something. In the first hour, you hear words like Mamulja, Zaralja, Galuljaja, Jelkbal, Hihimaha, Telubabu, Jabrilal, and Tonawata. And I only made one of those up. I felt like I needed a sheet of college ruled paper with notes written in different colored gel pens just to keep up. There's nothing inherently wrong with these. They're all names of people or cities or alternate words of ones we already know. All of that is fine. It takes a long while before you finally pick up on what word means what or who as you progress through the story, but it's a massive obtrusion early on that leaves the player lost and wondering what the hell they're even doing and why. It's too much too fast without room to explain or absorb that information before learning the next terminology. It'd be like if you saw some people playing a cool new board game and they say, hey, would you like to play with us? And you say, sure, but I've never played this before. How do I play? And then they explain all the rules by speaking in HD HTML code. Again, nothing wrong with world building, but how you do it matters, and this ain't the way. This also. I feel like the context is important again for this, though. Where we got slammed with stuff like this in Heaven's Word. The moment we went to Ishgard, and then we went to Cloud Top, and then we went to Ozzy's Law, and then we went to Annex Trine, we were getting slammed with stuff like this, but. It wasn't 100% of the context because we were still on Eorzea. We were still on our home continent. We were still surrounded by people and places and cultures that we've been around the whole time. So we were just kind of finding niche little pockets. But I feel like this was the first expansion where, no, we're just in a whole new area. Like there, there is culture shock that is going to happen. And being bombarded with these new things, I I feel like that was part of the intention. I feel like that was part of the experience. It was meant to be very heavily focused on, uh, honestly, just making sure you felt like you were in a new region that you've never been in before. And there's all these things that are new to you and confusing and you don't understand them. And I think it's fine to go through Dawn Trail and not remember all of this stuff. I don't think you're you're supposed to or expected to remember everything about like what Ihihana it was or what the I forget their names. The little like the 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 ceramic goblins. <laughs> I forget their names. 
<laughs> I don't remember anything about them because I didn't care about their area. I thought their little segment was dreadfully boring. But like the mom, I remember the I remember the Mamulja stuff. I remember what we had to do in Mamook. And it was all interesting. But do I remember all of it? Do I remember? No, I do remember most of it. I remember all of the important things about Mamook now that I think about it. I wanted to make an argument of like, you know, I, I was paying attention. I was reading it all on stream and some of it didn't stick. But I think I remember most of it. I remember the blessed sibling situation. I remember like that it was implying this dark scenario where the women of Mamook were being essentially coerced into breeding as much as possible to make more and more offspring to increase the chances that they'd be the they'd be blessed children and then if they weren't i'm assuming they would be allowed to just i don't remember if they mentioned if they would be allowed to live or if they were killing them off i do know that the jars in the sky deep cenote were filled with failed uh children that died shortly after childbirth that were blessed siblings and only i think it was like what one in one in 50 survived or something i forget what bako jaja says but i don't i i don't know if you can go through and you just miss a bunch of stuff and say it's too much because it's too you don't remember anything where it's yes it's front loaded but did you burn through did you burn through these cutscenes? Like, did you actually try to take it in, is my question, instead of just spamming through dialogue and whatnot? Because I know a lot of people do that. A lot of people skip cutscenes in this game. Hell, you guys think it's annoying when I'm skipping cutscenes, and this is no shade at, at, uh, at Vivi, but uh, it could be worse. I'll just say that. But... Even someone who skips every line of dialogue in a voiced cutscene before it's over is still reading it in this case. And it's like, if you're reading it and paying attention, I don't think it's too much. I don't think it's too much to pay attention to. So I, I, I don't want to just say like skill issue, <laughs> but. But maybe the expansion just wasn't that interesting to you from a narrative perspective if it wasn't attaching to you the way like I don't know it attached to me I don't again I don't remember a goddamn thing about the ceramic goblins I don't even know their name I'm calling them ceramic goblins I don't know what their name was I don't care about them they were boring John John Fontaine or whatever his name was I don't care about that character he was dull he could be removed and I would not know a difference it's just traumatic to see your newborn die or even miscarriage in general oh yeah for sure like can I relate to that no can I appreciate the weight that it has narratively maybe and I say maybe because it needs to be presented in a way that conveys that emotion to me cleanly. It's a, a good example would be like, no one likes to see like a friend die. And then we smash cut to here. You know what? I'll just fucking pull it up. I'm keeping this up though. This is so funny. I gotta, I gotta make a redeem of that. <laughs> um, uh, Hold on. I don't know if I can even find it. Spoilers for Heavy Rain, by the way. Where is it? Where, where's the scene? Is it this one? No, where is it? Yeah, here it is. Like... Man, the voice acting in this game does not. <laughs> okay, so for people that haven't played Heavy Rain, uh, this kid dies. 
<laughs> I can't with the voice. Okay, I'm just, I'm just gonna pause. This kid does not survive. Uh, <laughs> so he sounds so tired. <laughs> he sounds nonplus that he is about to die. <laughs> I'm not annoyed. I think it's funny when chat was like, "How could you skip?" Oh no, I'm. I if people are annoyed, uh, be annoyed. It it makes for fun content, but. What I mean is, it, it, with like what Starry's saying about the, tr it's traumatic to see a newborn die or ha have a miscarriage. I can appreciate that. I need it to be conveyed to me though in a way that has me engaged and seems to do the gravity of the matter justice, if that makes sense. Because this, this is his brother dying, and you 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 spend like five minutes trying to help this kid. And then he's like, it's not working. My foot is stuck. I am a TTS program. But you end up running away and going to try to find help. But uh, dad is drunk and locked you guys outside of the trailer. That is why the fuck is there trailer in the middle of this construction site, by the way? Can we talk about this? You won't talk about this if we ever do have your... Why is their trailer just here on this construction? Who? Like, whatever. This scene is so fucking stupid. Anyway. Like, I don't feel emotions during this scene the way that I feel like David Cage, I guess, wanted you to. Where else would you put the trailer? In a trailer park? <laughs> so hi, Akaris. <laughs> How's your week been? <laughs> location, location, location. But no, I, I don't feel sad at this scene. I'm, I am laugh in game the way I'm like having fun and cracking a joke about it now because it's ridiculous. It's, it is insane. It is a crazy sequence that makes no goddamn sense. <laughs> and you come back to the brother. I tried, John. I really tried. But he wouldn't come. Please don't die. Um, the frame rate actively shitting itself here does not help me f z like lock in on feeling sad. <laughs> but don't, don't forget about this guy. <laughs> I, I don't think a like a seven year old would say don't forget about me either. Uh, whatever. I don't buy this whole sequence. And granted. I will say the sequence this is propping up. I love like the the first time if you've never played Heavy Rain and you go in blind, it is the best way to play that game because every subsequent playthrough you're gonna go, oh that's fucking stupid. How did not, I not see that plot hole? Your first time through though, you're gonna have a great time. I love Scott Shelby. I think he is a a very very compelling character. Spoilers turned villain. And he's been a villain the whole time, but you don't know that your first time going in. I, whatever. The scene this is propping up is great. This scene itself, though, is fucking terrible and awful and borderline comical at times. We shitting on Dontrell's story. We're watching a pro Jared video he put out called The Problem with Dontrell. And I, I have problems with Dontrell, but I think people are being so unfair of it because everyone is looking at it without the context that it's in. And context matters. And I'm not saying context is in like, why are you making these weird judgments about the, these aspects of it without considering that there's external factors at play? What I'm, what I'm talking about is, why are we looking at Dontrell as an isolated thing instead of what it is. It is the first chapter. Well, not first chapter. It is the first book of a new story after you could leave at Endwalker. I said it earlier. You could walk away from this game at Endwalker and you would not have a cliffhanger. You would be fine. You'd be like, yeah, I saw everything. You, you don't, but I feel like it's, there's just a lot of hate for Dontrell from people that aren't looking at it in the reality that it exists in, which is it is doing what a realm reborn was doing. It is setting up a lot of shit. It is setting up a lot of shit 
first chapter of a new book, but it heavily relies on book one of the former series. That's 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 totally fair. There's plenty of criticism to make. Like I I have I I, I we were talking about Wukla Matt earlier. I think that she is probably the weakest person in Dontrell or person character. Like I think she's the weakest character in Dontrell. Period. I don't like the way she's written. Do I hate the character? No. She's written better than Thancred is. <laughs> Like, as far as a Realm Reborn Thancred's concerned, she's written better than Thancred is in uh, Stormblood, in my opinion. But then again, Thancred doesn't have a part in Stormblood. Like, he doesn't do much. He he just shows up and he goes, I have the emo haircut now, and I'm super tanned because I've been outside more, and I went through the afterlife hell that we exist in. Uh, Yastola, where is, is she? Is, you're blind now. I'm going to do espionage things. I'll see you guys later. I, Sacred story sucks in Stormblood. I'm sorry. He was doing shit off screen. I don't, whatever. I'm getting, I'm losing the plot. I'm yelling about something that's unrelated. <laughs> I'm losing the plot. <laughs> it exists in the context. That's, I think that's the important thing. But to look at it with the context of it being an MMO expansion instead of just it's an expansion period and it's by itself there's there's so much more going on so causes my biggest problem with it was a signs of the seventh dawn is no more than boom this is a job for the scions to hurt hey i love that scene i love that shit that i love that because it, it fits it fits the goofiness of ff14 i love and if we're gonna pretend that this game's not goofy i'm sorry endwalker might be the emo the most emotional What's the what's the word I want? The most emotionally slap happy expansion period, but it also is the goofiest expansion. Endwalker is so goofy. Somehow our story of a new journey turns into Wukla on her slap happy and her slap happy friend. I did not mean to say slap. I did not read that. What a coincidence. Uh, and her slap happy friends go on an adventure. That's fine with me. I'll explain. Let me read your whole thing and then I'll I'll hit on each point. Uh, the biggest culmination. Okay. Why is sound alerts not working? Is it just down? Did the last one even play or did it just take a minute? I feel like it took a minute. Sound alerts. Hello? Anyway. The biggest culmination, the final battle, the spotlight was stolen by Wilco Matt. <laughs> <laughs> the really shitty delivered one-liner. Yeah, I will agree with that. Um... I here we can just go look it up. Hold on. Um and it continues to sort of burn, but I've gotten to the point you should know this too. That's literally what she did during the that fight. She literally walked in and went, "No, you should know this about me, players." Uh Dontrell final cutscene. No, I know what you're talking about, though, Akaris. Like, I'm, I, I, I said on stream in the middle of it. I was like, "This ain't, this ain't it. This ain't working. <laughs> this isn't working. This doesn't make any sense." Was it before this? Yeah, it was before this. How did she get in? How, like, how did she get in? Like, okay, I'm not going to make this a, a stream where I'm going to critique a, a, you know, a voice actor who's, I, I, like, from my understanding, uh, newer to the industry. Um, because, yeah, they, like, there are scenes where, Wook's delivery is not as good as a Wook's delivery. What's her What's her name? Uh, Senna, I believe, is Wook's VA's name. Uh, Wook Lamat, voice actor. Is it Cena or Senna? 
Breyer. I don't know how to pronounce her name. Hey, anyway, there are sequences in this game where, yeah, I don't think Senna's delivery is the strongest, but I'll say this. It's loads better than anything in A Realm Reborn. You know this too. Wink. <laughs> It's far and above anything in a realm reborn. So it's I, I just look past it. It's not a huge deal to me. Um not about whether it was a good VA or not. Uh I'm not talking about the like the, the voice actor as a whole did a good job. I'm talking about the delivery on like this line, and there's like two others that I think were just kind of odd. But there's lines delivered by Alize that are also just fucking off, honestly. I, I say that with that energy, not at anybody in chat right now. Just the amount of discourse online of people going after either Santa Briar or just just extrapolating Everyone genuine critique. Prayer so I don't get heaven's ward raids for my roulette. Oh, those are good though. Oh wait, those are void arc raids, right? Those are trash. Don't get those. Anyway, uh, there's just people have extrapolated genuine critique of or not even critique. Just voicing of opinions of Wook Lamont to this weird just hate for the VA or something. It's like get the fuck out of here with that shit. I don't want it. I don't want to see it. I I don't. Whatever. Like it just like because that's not what I'm focused on when I talk about a game I like. I do not care about anything past the the thing we're talking about. But I know that sounds callous, and yes, I there's. But whatever. Uh, Don Troll would have been great if it was a spin-off single player RPG with Wukuma as a main character, but as an expansion of FF14 where I'm continuing my character story, it fell flat. That's fair. I, I, I Not everyone's going to be into being a side character. I thought it was awesome. I liked it. But I'm also just having fun with the story in my head. So it's... Like, it's... Wherever Yoshi P and the team want to take me is where I want them to take me. Um, she says Fiend is losing control of her power, which lets her break in. Yeah, but how did she break in? I don't... Here's my problem. It, it's, it's fucking Wook Lamat. All right? It, it's, it's, it's Wook. Goddamn, I counted six instead of four Lamat <laughs> in that mask room we were in. I don't buy that Wook Lamat's going to be the one to figure out how to break in. What? Show me someone else breaking through this wall and she follows in and I'll buy it more. I don't buy that she found a way through this little wall because I don't... I'm sorry. I don't trust her intelligence as a character to know how to do that. I just don't. She has been played as this goofball with a heart of gold that is ignorant and naive but working on that the whole time. I do not buy she knew how to do this. I don't get it. I don't like most of Endwalker either. I love Endwalker. I, well, we're going to do, probably when I get back from hiatus, and especially once we, or before we start New Game Plus, I still want to do a stream where we just, we're going to rank all of the expansions, and we're just going to talk about them one by one. It's going to be a long, just yap session. Um, It's not going to be for everyone. That stream might be boring for some people. But if you want to talk about each expansion one at a time and just rant or go over what was cool about them and what wasn't, in retrospect, uh, that'll be the stream for you. So expect that. Again, I'm going to be on hiatus all of September because I'm moving for anyone that doesn't know or wasn't here for the last few streams. So that stream will probably be in October. So spooky month. But anyway, um, no, I <laughs> silly doesn't really do smarty. That's where I am with her. Being a side character is what we needed for this point. I I think that's a, I I agree, but I I understand people that don't want that in their in their game where they've been the main character for four things. But it's just there's been a lot of disingenuous discourse. I do, and I know that you won't be swayed from your course. I, I this delivery was good. I just feel like there needed to be more energy on the the Sphine, listen to me line whenever she comes flying in through the wall.
But whatever. I, I digress. It's better than anything in a Realm Reborn. I feel like it would have been really better to just do a Discover the Old Civilization or let's do beginning adventure things and New Lands kind of deal. I've Hold on. I was on board for most of it as we're helping someone up until it turned into another Save the World scenario. I mean, I feel like it was that. Um, specifically, the the first half of your sentence I'm, or message I'm going to respond to for a second. I feel like it was that. No joke. <laughs> she is Naruto. Like I, I'm not gonna argue that point. I feel like we were doing that though, because if you go back to a Realm Reborn, we didn't. I don't think we were the main character in a Realm Reborn for a long time. To me, I didn't feel like we were. I feel like I was just an adventurer doing things, and then I met the Scions, and then I was doing things for the Scions for a while, and I didn't become the main character until the power of the Echo was fully understood in our character not as a player but our character understood it and then we were put into the driver's seat proper and i feel like that's what the first half of this was and the second half i don't know if i'd say it was a save the world scenario it, it's someone made a really good point on uh twitter believe it or not very rarely uh it happens though and it was zoral jaw spent 30 years or 30 years plus probably um, squeezed an egg Secret out. Secret technique: yapping of resolution. <laughs> had a, had a kid. Um, sent an army over, and then like three dragons dismantled his entire armada he had parked outside of Dilialal in about five minutes. And the the point I saw being made that I didn't think of was like, what chance would they have actually even had genuinely if instead of just race Valgar, his sister and like three buddies, we saw race Valgar, his sister and 70 of his buddies all defending Eorzea from Sphine's army. Like what, what is Sphine going to actually do? Because her little conquest plot doesn't work. If you look at how much. Oh yeah, Vitra. Sorry, he's the one I'm thinking of. My bad. I think it was implied there was more. Uh, but one of them was the fucking first one. Yeah, my bad. I, Vitra was the one I was forgetting about. He was there too. Like, uh, Her conquest plot doesn't succeed. No matter how I thought about it. It doesn't. So it's like, even if Wukumat didn't stop this, I don't think there was going to be a world ending scenario that you could believe. And instead, I think because of that, we should look at Sphine's plot as what it is, because the whole thing always came back to she was so desperate as this recreation of emotions. She was so desperate that she was willing to overwrite her own compassion and her own hesitancy to force the plan to work. And the plan was never going to work anyway. And the whole point of Dontrell un under the surface of every interaction was, Sphine, there's a better way. This will not work. You cannot keep this up. And every time she wa she seemed to want to almost acquiesced to that but always stopped herself which is interesting she was trying to force a rejoining event but where her people came out on top of the source was she trying to force a rejoining though like did she even know what it was because we we talked to her a lot about it and she seemed to not understand the nuances and didn't seem to understand the nuance of what happened on her end really as well. Cause it sounded like she was just trying to, because there was literally an interaction between the main cast and Sphine where I forget who it was, but someone straight up asks her like, what will you do after that? You're going to need more Aether. And she's like, I'll just keep, I'll keep finding gas stations. <laughs> I'll just find the, the, the next speedway or loves on the interstate and i'm gonna i'm gonna fuel up and then we're gonna keep going and it's what do you do when you're out of shards though and she never answered that question because there's not an answer she didn't even posit the solution of we'll figure out something we're using this to buy time right now she just said we'll just keep 
keep trucking along. <laughs> it wasn't the army that was the problem. It was the combined no jutsu she was trying to do. There's a war going on. They got a plan and they were ready for him. Like, I, I feel like Dontrell's doing the Zelda thing where people are disliking it. And then people are going to look back on it and go, yeah, it was pretty good. And I'm going to want to slap the shit out of people go, yeah, it's pretty good in two years after they were screaming about it for a year. Because it, 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 it's not bad. It's just we don't have the full picture of what it's trying to set up. And we don't know what the internal story like Bible doc is for the FF team. But we don't have that information. My ongoing question is the first shard was the OG Lightning Calamity or the new one because it doesn't add up on the timeline because the Ice Calamity came after unless the Lollafell's coming over had some tiny tummy whimy nonsense. Yeah, we talked about that, right? It was like shard six that was the Lightning Calamity one. No, shard six was the Ice one. Was it 12 that was Lightning? And then six, when it had its ice calamity, caused our problem on the source. And then they fled the Alo Alo Islands to whatever shard Spheen is on. Which, again, there's things that we're, they're going to do time travel again. They've already primed us for it in Shadowbringers and they're priming it for us again here. Like they're not. They're not letting us forget about the time travel stuff because the moment we went to walk through that portal, we were immediately looking at the characters in the eyes as they went. Time is synchronized <laughs> or like Alize, don't let us get too old or whatever the lines were that they were saying. Anyway, whoops. Hold on. I thought this was the pro Jared video. Whoopsies. Back to this. There's a lot of pacing issues because the main story quest is so dull. It seriously takes three hours of cutscenes before you get something resembling gameplay when you finally get to attack something. Never before has the story quest ever had such an abundance of go here and right click a person, now go here to right click a person, cutscene, now right click this person so you can go somewhere, meet that person halfway there to that location, right click them, and then finally get to the destination to right click the same person. I'm sorry, go play A Realm Reborn again. Dontrell did the one thing that I have been bitching about since A Realm Reborn, which is when we have to go somewhere new after clicking someone, they just take us there a lot of the times. We just end up going to a different location in cutscene or in load screen, and then we're just there, and then we can talk to the next person. Granted, yes, it was a lot of walking compared to Endwalker, and a lot of walking compared to Shadowbringers, but, but... It's also the start of a new story. I know I'm going to keep falling back on that, and it's probably going to be annoying that I'm going to keep falling back on that, but there's not a lot of big things that are going to justify a new cutscene constantly. A lot of it's going to be back to just the old normal adventure stuff where it's like we're not this we're not this god slayer in these cutscenes anymore. We're, well, we, we, we subtly are. In Dontrell, but we're not getting these big cutscenes where these wild, crazy things are happening. We're back to a realm reborn, just old school adventures. It's really annoying, though, to watch. Uh, so the, the FF community doesn't know what they want, and you know it just expands extends beyond the FF community because that's a stupid take for me to even voice as the fact. G gamers don't know what they want. People consuming media do not know what the hell they want. They do not understand a lot of the draw for the stuff they enjoy I feel like and it's we saw all this build up to Dontrell where in the six point plus quest we had like Estinian holding a map out and going do you want to go on another adventure a norm like a boring one too it's going to be normal you're going to deliver pretzels and shit again and everybody I saw on Twitter and on the forums like yes yeah I want to go on another treasure hunt just take me somewhere normal we saved the world. It's vacation time. And then we get that where we're just doing the original stuff we did before we were like a full-fledged scion. And people are complaining about it again for some reason. 
I I just don't. Like, did people like? It's like buying a VCR and then getting mad that the quality is bad. If you wanted the basic stuff again, why why get hype about it? And then when you get the basic stuff again, you're complaining about it. But yes, there's more to it than that. There's like Akaris is saying, like being the side character isn't for everyone. Not everyone wanted that anymore. Or not everyone's up for that in every story. Like I'm up for it. I love that stuff. But I also don't mind a story experimenting and doing weird things. It's I'm watching a big like three hour video on um Stranger Things right now by I think it's space I think his name is Space Ninja. Friendly Space Ninja. Um, I'm like halfway through this video and it is two and a half hours and a lot of people don't like Stranger Things season three and there's a lot of things he's pointing out in this video that I completely agree with. I understand why people don't like Stranger Things season three. I understand why he doesn't like Stranger Things season three. I understand the problems that he's pointing out with Stranger Things season three. I didn't have any problem with Stranger Things season three, but I also am very weird with how I consume media. I, I pay attention to a lot of stuff in FF, for example, that's the closest one I'll point to that we had a lot of people come in during Endwalker who were very surprised that I was not emotional at certain points. And it's annoying because this stream is gone because I got really depressed, not for Endwalker, but I got really depressed that week and I forgot to export the VOD, so I don't have it anymore. But it was the sequence in Ultima Thule when you are watching the Scions sacrifice themselves to create the bridges that you need out of Dynamis. And who was it? I think it was Thancred that evaporates first. I did not feel emotion at all during any of those sequences because right after Thancred was gone, I think it was, it was either Yastola or was it a low, it wasn't a low pour it. Someone mentioned something like there's a, there's a faint, there's a faint Thancred odor still in the air. I could still smell him, but he's still, and I, I went, Oh, okay. So he's, he's fine. They're just going to bring him back. Okay. Cause he still exists. They immediately get rid of him and then immediately say he's still here. And they do that with all of them. So whenever they start knocking the Scions out, when you see Astinian disappear, when you watch Yastola disappear, when you watch Thancred disappear, when you watch the twins disappear, I didn't cry. I didn't feel sad. Each one was met with a very nonplussed, like, yeah, I, you're not... I, it's very clear what you're trying to do to manipulate my heartstrings here. Um... This ain't working, Chief. I'm I'm not feeling anything at any of, of what you're trying to put down into my lap right now. It's not working at all. And the only time that I got emotional, and it it, it was very funny. The only time I got emotional was the Grahatia part. I think it's here. After you talk to Omega. I think it's this part. Yeah, I started crying. For me, that is being here with my friends. Full proud of how much we've grown together. It's funny, Graha's the one where I didn't get emotional at all. <laughs> Give up. Heed your heart's desire and hope that where the is it? you long for shall be realized. Okay, Firefox, can you work with me? I'm on a 24 core CPU, god damn it. Oh my god, are you okay? Okay, what is I want causing... you to make me a promise? What is causing this? Stop it! Stop! Stop!
Stop. Stop. What is causing this? Jesus. Am I going to have to restart my whole browser? Are, what is happening? When does he fist bump you? When does he do the COVID handshake? <laughs> 24 core CPU, but only two cores are used. I don't know what's going on. I mean, I, I'm dead. I got 64 gigs of RAM. Use it. <laughs> God damn. When does he do the fist bump? I want to point out exactly when I cried. Look at this. Look at it. Like it's, it's just dying. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> Are you serious? Windows, you are like actual garbage. Okay, is it the Twitch thing? Oh my god, it's the it's like the Twitch thing. God damn it. Is it here? Yeah, here. Right here's where I cried. When he he offered the fist bump, that's when it like fully took me out. And I don't know why, I don't know why it was Graha that took me out because the twins didn't. And I did, like, I didn't fully cry until here. I have it. Did I say Selenia auto weld? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Because I didn't fully cry until we hit um, the the walk. And even then, it was it was a very weird situation. Because I was already breaking down at the start of stream. So this compilation on the main channel is... It's, it's right where I started. It, it's exactly where I started. I, I cut out the intro. And I didn't spend a lot of time talking on this stream. I... I kind of immediately went into the game because I was just so excited to continue. And the moment Alize and Alphanob were talking, I was struggling to even read their dialogue, to be honest. Like it, it was it, it was rough to read their dialogue. Um and it's still probably one of my favorite parts of the game. A little script out. It was getting to me again, but I digress. I hope this little edited down uh, Firefox play. This is so fucking annoying. Oh my god. But I was having trouble just reading the dialogue here after the Graha situation, which is weird because I spent two hours in Ultima Thule going, yeah, this isn't sad. I see what they're trying to do and it's not going to work. It's not going to get to me. But the moment... We got to the walk. I ended up kind of falling apart, not at what you would think. I didn't fall apart at Horshafont. I didn't fall apart at Ardbert, surprisingly. And Ardbert is a wild one because honestly, every sequence with Ardbert kind of had me crying or close to it in Shadowbringers. I always felt so bad for him. But it was it was Rao Bon with whatever he says. Man. <laughs> I don't know if I can watch this. I might cry again. <laughs> Just reading the sorrow of a thousand thousand worlds <laughs> weighs heavy, and yet you can walk on is <laughs> uh... <laughs> Th this this killed me. Right there behind you. Behind you. No! The Ardbert line was really good. <laughs> no. Come on. <laughs> Which one was the Rao Bond voice? I forget what he oh says. Oh my god. Do not despair. You are not you without are allies. <sighs> oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> what we have sown in blood, we have reaped in suffering, and it cannot go on. <sighs> This whole segment is gold. 
upon the souls of they who have sacrificed themselves to pave the way for peace. We will never <laughs> abandon. We cry. We cry. <laughs> Please hold on. Ah, uh, nah. I, I don't know. We might break here. Too often to anger and avarice. We gotta play Endwalker again. <laughs> oh man. Oh, that's not cool. a really one without sacrifice, but the prize is worth the price. I think it was that line that got me. But that that one, something about hearing Rao Bon. But no, I, I think it was Dua in chat was like, did you look at the status effect on your screen? And I, I didn't. I didn't notice it. Um, and it might be one of my favorite parts of the game. Where is it? Have you read the debuff on your screen? And Walker walking alone under journeys and the burden weighing heavy. <laughs> That's going to make me cry again. Reading it. Like, ah. What a good status effect. It wasn't making me sad because of all the pe like all the scions being killed off. Because they weren't killed off. And it was obvious they weren't killed off. The big bow is cute. Uh, a little. I'm going to ruin the bow for you real quick. So it's actually... Here, let me screenshot and then I'll zoom in. So in uh, VC face, you can't easily make like a texture like that. Can I zoom in? Is Windows just going to be terrible? Okay, there we go. Um, if you look, <laughs> this little little like hump here and then this hump, the bow is actually ears. So the way I did this bow was I just took the I took the cat ears and I applied a texture to them. And then I reshaped them slightly so that you can't really tell they're the ears until you look really close. And it also has physics, such as the ears. And then the little ribbon down the side here is rabbit ears. So it's two cat, it's three cat ears. So it's a cat ear. Um, there's another cat ear. And then there's a, there's a third cat ear right there to make a little bump. And then there's a rabbit ear that goes down this way. <laughs> But no, uh, that makes it less cute. How I, I, I didn't say it does. I just people think it's like a bobo, but it's not. Uh, anyway, no. This whole segment was emotional, not even because of what was going on with the scions, but it was starting to hit me that it, oh, the game's over. <laughs> like a game I've been playing since. 2020-ish that I've met some of like my best friends and strongest friends friendships through like it's this is it like this is this is the end of it and I'm gonna have to wait for the next expansion but in Walker was great sorry I forgot where we were what well, let me go back like 10 seconds what did Pro Jared say. It seriously takes three hours of cutscenes before you get something resembling gameplay when you finally get the person. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, no, it's. I don't. I don't think it's fair to. Again, I. People are going into Dontrell expecting there to be. all of this context and all of this continue like what do we ha literally what do we have to continue from endwalker we have the shards yes and we have the remaining Asians, yes what else do we have though because with the shards we have yastola's side plot that's going on that we're getting answers to slowly with the Asians. We're probably going to run into them again, but I don't think they're ever going to be the threat they were before. And if we don't run into them again, anything, anything more than like a side quest or something that kind of, you know, ties up their, their story to go like, oh yeah, they just kind of disbanded after everything. Um, that's, that's fine. 
that's totally okay with me. God damn it, I lost the game. Wait, what do you mean? <laughs> but it's a lot of people talk about Dontrell as if they're going into it expecting another scene like The Walk in Ultima Thule or another sequence like like In From the Cold or something like that. And it's it's very strange that there is this discourse back and forth but it's not new discourse. This isn't unique to FF. It's it, this is just MMO discourse. It's video game discourse period. It's it's the Zelda thing of Wind Waker comes out, people go, "Ew, what the fuck is this? It's gross. It looks like it's for kids." Everyone hates it. Twilight Princess comes out. And somewhere in that noise and cacophony that is, "God, Twilight Princess is the best thing ever." Emerge day. Man, Wind Waker was really good too. And then you have Skyward Sword coming out. And you have, man, Skyward Sword's so good. Twilight Princess fucking sucked though. It was just Ocarina of Time all over again. Wind Waker's still great. And then you have Skyward Sword's discourse a few years later going, man, Skyward Sword kind of just sucked. It wasn't that great. It was kind of rough. Twilight Princess was really, really good though. But it was Ocarina of Time all over. Who cares if it was Ocarina of Time all over again? Just like it's the same with Dontrell in my head. I was like, who cares if it's if it's mirroring a Realm Reborn's pace and in, in kind of catalyzing agents again? Who cares? I don't mind it and I don't think anyone should be too focused on it since it's the first part of a new story like let it cook give it time let it act as a foundation let's see what comes next it's like well it's the expansion that came out and I want to play the rest of the game and it's like Bleh. and we're two hours in and we're through we're oh, man, we do this every time we get into a video that actually is like discussion worthy holy shit we're three minutes in and it's been two hours <laughs> this video is 13 minutes long We're, we're not. Oh, we're not getting to anything else tonight. This is all we're doing. Holy shit. <laughs> Halfway there to that location, right click them, and then finally get to the destination to right click the same person. The entire main story is about Wook Lamott becoming the next leader of the land over her siblings by proving herself. This involves going around to every neighboring state, learning about their people, and helping them with whatever problem they currently have so that Wook Lamott gets a different flavor of Jolly Rancher to put into her Egyptian god card or whatever. So a realm reborn with the the gummy bear crystal things. <laughs> so remove your finger from the pause button. <laughs> Video will be finished next month. The state it's like a Dragon Ball episode. No, it's literally a realm reborn though. That is a realm reborn. We're going around to different cultures, all of the beast tribes, and. We're getting different colored crystals to put into our gummy bear tablet, except instead of a gummy bear tablet, it's this weird mind palace we go into. At least the premise itself lends itself to teaching you about all the different cultures and customs, if only it wasn't so goddamn boring. I, I, I that's an, that I. Is it boring, though? I mean, that's a subjective thing, so I'm not going to argue with it. Like it's it's this objective truth. I will say the only part that I think was objectively dull. You know what? I'm going to backpedal that. The only part I'm going to say I strongly feel was dull because I don't think it's objective. Because people in this chat have been like, John Fontaine was a good man. <laughs> I don't give a shit about that Ellison. He was the most boring character. It was the the ceramic goblins? I again, I don't know their name. What the what are they even called? Hold on, where are they even from? I need to check this because I keep calling them ceramic goblins, and that is not like, that's not what they do. What is, they're from Earthenshire. They're like the the, the the whatever people know who they are. Just they're boring. They they didn't do anything. I mean, super boring. 
But everyone else was cool. Like, I liked the Yakui. Uh, granted, I didn't care about the Yakui beyond their their very interesting afterlife belief. And I thought it was like that part was cool. I really thought that the OK Hanu were interesting because they were just the Vanu Vanu, but done well. I, I, th- does anybody know about the Vanu Vanu? Does anybody know anything about them? Does anybody care about the Vanu Vanu? Yeah, they're cool owl people that do like the ha 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 dance thing. But it's like, does anybody care about the Han- the the, uh, the Vanu Vanu in Cloud Top? I, there's probably like at least some people in the fan base that goes, yeah, it's my favorite place. I thought they were really interesting, but like, really, like who cares? Who cares about the 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 um. The emulsia also like I, the emulsia are boring. The the sylphs are one of the only few pre Shadowbringers tribes that I think are genuinely kind of cool, but they're cool because they're interesting looking, and it makes their world look more interesting. The kobolds were okay, but it's more just like I like Gabu's story. I don't I don't care about the kobolds. I the Sahagan. I literally don't remember anything about the Sahagan. I don't think they ever came up aside from when Merlewib shoots three of them and that spirit keeps hopping from Sahagan to Sahagan. The Ixali were... I, I don't know what the difference between the Ixali and the Amalja are. I, they, they're both lizard people or something. Right? I don't know. <laughs> I literally know nothing about the Realm Reborn tribes. I don't... The Vaths were interesting, but... The Vath were kind of handled in the way that a realm re- or um so repair your fucking gear. I yeah 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 yeah. The Vath were kind of handled in the way the Don- the Dontrell tribes are handled, where you actually had to go through their their little rituals and things to understand what was going on with um uh Ravana, which was cool. Like it was fun. The Vanu Vanu didn't matter. The Kojin are super cool. I like the Kojin. I don't remember any of the other Stormblood tribes. Uh, granted, you can see I don't have a lot of them. Probably. I don't know. I don't know if there's more than just one. No, I yeah, I just don't have them because there should be low parts here. So I don't know what I'm missing from the rest of these, but like the ones that I find cool post Heavensward, if you notice, are the ones that the story makes you go and talk to and like do things for. I mean, like, literally falling asleep in my chair as I'm playing it boring. And what gets weird is that that story is basically finished once you hit about level 96. So then you and Aaronville go to Texas for, like, an hour to basically waste a lot of time with some cowboys until you're pulled right back into Wukla Mott's problems with invading spaceships and robots. I wish I was kidding. This has nothing to do with anything, but I just want to say, y'all, stop being so horny for Bakuljaja and Zorolja. Seriously? What the hell? What's bizarre is that all of the poor world-building exposition and uninteresting story moments all get much better better from here once you meet the i will agree with this uh the, the back half of dontrell was so much more interesting i was so much more engaged every time sphene was on screen i was glued uh, sphene was such a fun character I-, I loved everything about her interactions everything about sphene was cool people of Alexandria and then begin to learn about that culture and how they function, it's actually pretty great. They do such a better job of showing you how it all works with much more interesting moral quandaries and even relevancy to the main plot. It's almost like this half of the story was designed by a completely different person than all that Dawn Servant stuff. The most repeated straw man argument I've seen staunch defenders retweet all the time is that nobody likes the Dawn Trail story because, God forbid, it doesn't have massive world-ending stakes or massive threats that could end the universe. Ooh, sorry y'all hate world building. Knock it off with that. I'm not not hungry for what you're spewing, so stop putting words in my mouth. It's fine to have a story that's more upbeat and lighthearted, or doesn't have a misguided death demon from another reality wanting to consume every living thing's chakra or whatever. You can have just as good a story, if not arguably a more interesting one, by having personal stakes. It doesn't have to be me versus the end of the world, but it sure as hell should be me versus the threat of loss. Okay, so based on this complaint alone, the problem isn't that Don... Because I was about to say, Dontrell is a personal stakes type of story for the first half. And if we look at the latter half through the lens I was talking about, where it's... Sphene literally never had a chance 
of saving her people because if she tried to take the souls of the people in in the source yeah the dragons would just wipe them out we've already seen how much more powerful they are there's yeah that wouldn't no um but it sounds like the issue is the warrior of light isn't the main character based on this if it's supposed to be me versus the threat of loss sort of thing Vanu Vanu tribe is boring and didn't get any better after finishing their tribal quest. I wouldn't expect them to. I have no desire to do their tribe quest. Throughout the entirety of the story, there's basically not a single reason for me, as the player character, to care. I'm completely sidelined to be the speechless NPC in Wuklamat's story, which is supposed to be her personal journey, but I'm the one doing everything for her. What sucks is that there are many opportunities for some kind of personal conflict that felt like Dawn Trail was setting up and I was all ready for, only for it to completely fizzle out without any kind of follow through. As Wuklamat is journeying and fulfilling her duties to become Dawn Servant, she is in direct competition with her brother, Kona, and much like Wuklamat, Kona has has also hired some people to assist him in his travels to become ruler, Thancred and Urianje. Oh damn, we've known these guys for a decade. They're my homies. And now they're against us? That right there. Can we talk about Urianje's? Or not Urianje, Thancred's um, reaction when Kona's like, what will you do about your friends? And his, re his response to Kona was, I'm going to beat this shit out of Alize. <laughs> Someone pointed that out that that's how blunt he was on the other day, and it cracked me up because I I realized he was blunt, but when I thought about, I was like, man, he really did just threaten her out of nowhere when Kona even approached the topic of like, what are you gonna do with your friends? He singled out Alize harder than anybody else. And it cracked me up. It cracked me up on stream and in retrospect. But like, I will say this: if If, if your complaint with Dontrell is that they kept built or not your complaint, but one of the complaints is they did build us up pre-release with, we'll see the other scions and maybe you'll fight them. And you know, it'll be scions versus scions and whatnot. Yeah, that didn't happen. We got it for literally one interaction. in in the first, I think it's the level 93 dungeon. I, I forget what it's called. It, 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 Worker Zormor where you're climbing the mountain and Thancred drops a boulder or something in front of uh, Wuk uh, Wuklama and all of you guys. I forget who's with you at that point. But that's all we kind of get out of that. We we don't really get what they were talking about pre-release ever. And yeah, it's kind of frustrating. Is great. That's interesting. What was going to happen if at some point we became in direct conflict? Would we have to fight the comrades we've known forever? Would those two be able to follow through? Would they choose their duty to Kona over the friendship they've had with the player? Yeah, probably. Sancred would. Uriandre would also be. He, he has literally betrayed us three times. <laughs> it's just just to make sure the plan doesn't go go awry so yeah probably or was either side willing to go to fulfill their promise to their elected dawn servant what would the follow-up be like after should such a skirmish happen something that could irrevocably damage the relationship between the characters that we've known for so long oh wait never mind literally nothing like that happens in fact there's pretty much no reason for either of them to be there it could have been any other two rando npcs and have just as much of an impact on the story as anything else this was one of that's the biggest wastes of potential equally wasted is basically Every single sign on the seventh dawn, Thancred and Urianje being there at all, ultimately ended meaning absolutely nothing. Practically each one of them is just kind of there, adding nothing to conversations and doing nothing to move the plot forward. They're spectators at best, but have to be shoved in so that you can use them for dungeons and duties. At least give them a purpose or something to add. Look at Alize. Literally, why is she here? She's with you the entire time and entire cutscenes go by where she doesn't say a word because she has nothing to add. Al Cannot like hold can, okay. Again, I am someone who, when I go into a story, I'm in the headspace of all right. Take me on your journey. I I just want to see what you you have for me as the person who made the story. And it it's very easy here to say, oh yeah, the FF14 cast is just it's it was too big at times during Don Trell. It. Does every character have to have this poignant commentary or have this big purpose to be part of the story? Like, do they? Does ev do, do we need e like every character to be an actionable entity? 
in a cutscene or in in a moment that they're visible like can they can they not just be there are they not allowed to just be part of the crew and not have anything to say and i'm not saying this to to counter this argument or even be a contrarian but it's just annoying that the moment a cast member in a story that has a lot of cast members is not a proactive member it's like why were they there it's like do they need a reason to be there other than they're part of the crew like do they genuinely need a reason every time to be there because if we're gonna say that um man astinian really shouldn't be in about 80 percent of this goddamn game my man's just chilling like all did he did, did he need to be anywhere in a lot of uh, end walker like what did he do what did Estinian ever do in end walker as like a, a big player like yes he helped kill like you know defend some people and what it's shy sure fine but beyond those sequences when he's in cutscenes, does he need to be there? If he's not saving someone or helping out Vitra, does he need to be there? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Uh, we got him shirtless and covered in sweat, so he's forgiven because uh, fans are fickle for media they like. Part of the crew, part of the ship. Yeah, no, I'm serious. Like, good reference, but also seriously, yes. He was there to be covered in blood and look pretty. Yeah, is that a problem? Like, I don't think that's a problem for that to just be all that they're there for for a minute. Like, does Alize need to have this big dialogue? I, I, it's just annoying to. It feels nitpicky to always go to that in every story ever and just go. Well, this character wasn't like fighting a boss, or you know, this character wasn't doing this giant thing so they it's just they shouldn't have been there period it's like, what do you mean they shouldn't have been there period it's like, let them be there alpha knows almost as bad if he didn't run off to take care of some other thing every now and then estinian appears because why the hell not at one point they're like that's literally estinian's character I called for backup, and in comes Grahatia and Yishtola, which is supposed to be like this big moment where you're like, oh dude, it's them, they're here, this is sick, and then they don't contribute anything until something magical happens, and you need- Why else would they be there? What are they gonna contribute to? Yishtola's blind, and she's good at spell casting, and Graha's the, the crystal boy. What else are they gonna be used for? That's their character. Need someone to explain it they barely have any voice lines i mean i'm glad the voice actors are still getting some work but really they could have been taken out of this expansion pack and nobody would have noticed yes they would have because we need yastola here to see like two or three things out of the entire giant 80 item list because two or three of those things are very important important are very important for her development later with her plot she's going to get back to runar we have to have her here and graha needs to be here because he specializes in a lot of the magic that's used right now i do, really <laughs> why are these two the characters being singled out it's set up it's set up for shit that's coming we know what what they're going to be used for but this is a wholesome stream and i can't say those things <laughs> <laughs> you think this is a wholesome stream? You're on the wrong stream. <laughs> no, but like, really? Yestola and 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 Graha are the two pointless characters that could be. Astinian could literally have been killed off, and nobody would notice. Nobody would know. This man says nothing in this exact cutscene. This cutscene on screen right now, he literally says nothing. You know who else says nothing? Oriandre. And fucking Thancred. And goddamn uh fuck, what's his name? Uh Ellen Eshbia. Shit, what's his what's his name? Fucking Ellen Eshbia could be removed too from this cutscene. He wouldn't matter. I know we're talking about the game as a whole. But Ellen Eshbia didn't say anything in this game or in this cutscene, period. There's like two other characters in this cutscene that say nothing. Why are we singling out the two people that need to be here for the most plot relevant item? I'm, I'm sorry, what a short-sighted opinion. 
Seeing all of them be so underutilized is a crime when there are so many opportunities to use them. More than ever before, they've all been reduced down to tools you pull out of a box whenever you need something instead of actually letting them, you know, be characters. One of the biggest... Uh, you, uh, they've, they've been like that for a minute. Um, Sancred was this during all of Stormblood because he was the espionage boy. Um, Sancred was this during Endwalker as the espionage boy. Again, he was just a tool we pulled out. Is a tag for feet. <laughs> struggles to actually enjoying the story is not just because of the lack of stakes, but also because there's no real reason to care. A lot of this is because of what Clamat. She has the weakest, blandest character introduction and isn't compelling enough to make anyone care about her plights from the get-go. She first shows up in the 6.55 patch content before the release of Dawn Trail, which is basically about two hours of her being a doofus who really likes food, and then you watch her eat something in a comical manner. So she's a Final Fantasy character. I feel like this is describing her as in a more negative light than than it needs to be because yes she's a big goofball that like it, she's an FF character it's about as anime trope as it gets and this is somehow supposed to make me want to help her deal with her dawn servant nonsense when yes yes it is an FF character all I've seen is her act like a simpleton it is Yes. Not a good introduction. That said, Wilk Lamott is a wonderful character. It is nice to have someone so unerringly upbeat and willing to engage with people. She, above all others, is the first to say, hold on, let's hear them out. It's great that she's able to have enough awareness of herself to realize that she isn't the smartest or most strategic person around, which is why she ends up respecting someone like Kona so much and needing him around. The majority of the story stuff that happens with her isn't inherently interesting, but she as a character handles it well and is endearing to see. Also, all the people complaining that Wilk Lamont being poorly voice acted and has flat deliveries? No offense, but what in the goddamn hell are you talking about? Anyone saying this is either repeating what they've seen other people say in online discourse because they can't form an opinion of their own, or they only played through the 6.55 patch scenes with her in it. The voice actress kills it in so many scenes and her performance is perfect for the character. Anytime Wook Lamont goes through any kind of distress or confrontation, especially with Zeralja and Bukuljaja, the emotion seeps through every single line. You can't tell me hers is bad when she's going up against other voice actors who sound like they slept through their role anyone okay who are the voice actors that slept through the role though because especially with Zeralja and Bukuljaja the emotion seeps through every single line you can't tell me hers is bad when she's going up because if if it's supposed to be Yastola, Kryle, or Alphanod, I don't think they slept through their role. I think they all did a damn good job this time. Against other voice actors who sound like they slept through their role. Anyone who says she sounds bad and prefers the Japanese audio needs to step off right now. You don't know what good voice acting is. You just like noises you don't understand. That said, she's got some real- What, what a, what a weirdly aggressive segment. Uh, sorry, like- it, There are lines that, that- are not delivered the best for Wuklamat, and there are lines not delivered the best for Alize, and there are lines not delivered the best for like even characters as far back as like Papa, uh, not Papa Limo, uh, fucking um, uh, Amaric. Even after we got the big voice actor swap in after A Realm Reborn, but it's like I don't know. We talked about this at the start. I, I have complaints about. Uh, about like a few lines, but it's like I have complaints about lines from Sir Amaric at the start of Heaven's Word. I have complaints about lines from from Lise in Stormblood. I have complaints about lines from I want to say Ral Bond, but I can't think of a lot. Maybe Ilbert's a better example around the around that expansion as well. But Ilbert's a, like a side character. I mean, yeah, he's like a he's like a he's like a side antagonist, but whatever weak ass voice directing sometimes. The final battle voice lines come to mind. So to the voice actress for Wook Lamott, great job. You slayed. I still stand by that Wook Lamott is not super interesting and did not give me a strong enough reason to want to help her. Her introduction is way too weak and I'm still not given anything to push me toward caring about her story because instead I'm just kind of told to be there and told to do it. Even more frustrating is that all of her endeavors consisting of learning about the neighboring people, seeing their customs, their ways of life, occasionally dealing with a primal or whatever, she doesn't do any of their 
tasks the player does. So it's not even like I'm willing to back her corner because I'm watching her persevere and accomplish all these things to better herself as a person. I'm the one doing all the work and she's taking credit for it. There was a single moment that was set up that could have been really, really interesting and it was completely squandered. I'm curious. It it, does it feel like it's the care it's the warrior of light doing all of her work because we're not using trust for the duties that she is obviously involved in because if we're using trust i wonder if it would feel more coherently like oh we're working with wukulmat through these things Near the end of the trials, you take a night's rest at the inn of Tuliolo, and in the middle of the night, there's a knock at the door. Who's standing there when you answer it but Wook Lamott? She starts acting very nervous, like there's something she really wants to say but is afraid of the response. 20 seconds later, you're sitting on top of a cliff and she's chill again talking about herself. I thought for sure this was setting up for Wook Lamott to admit falling in love with the player. It would have been fascinating to introduce an NPC that falls in love with your character, regardless Man. of what your race and gender... I, I thought this is how we were going also, and I thought it would have been really cool. I was very disappointed on stream when we got to the top of the palace, and she's like, I'm going to be the next Hokage. Thanks for coming up here with me, by the way. Cryo said I should uh, yell that, and I was nervous. Like <laughs> That was a very, very like odd set of events. It was the perfect setup and everything was alluding to it, only to be completely abandoned in the very next scene. She asks you if you would be by her side if she becomes Dawn Servant, which is a request that's as hollow as the story itself because obviously you can't actually do that. You got endgame raids to go on. If they had actually committed and made Wook Lamott be in love with you, it would change the subtext of every single scene afterwards. And hey, you know what else that would have done? added in personal stakes to the story, which would have made it infinitely more interesting. She could admit she loves you, and then there's an inevitability of having to let her down and breaking her heart, something that could erode any positive and upbeat character such as her. Having this frequent ray of sunshine and rainbows, having to go through so much loss, struggle, and coming to terms with her own life, knowing full well that you having to turn her down is what would hurt her the most, would have been one of the most fascinating story beats they would ever have. But nah, there's nothing like that. What Lamotte is all about her mission and she doesn't fall in love with you because Final Fantasy 14 has no balls. Another really easy way to make the story be from things you're just... That would have been cool though. I would have been all on board for a little plot thread like that. I think it would have been fun. Doing to a story with personal interest and a strong desire to see it through is replace Wook Lamont. For real. Imagine her exact same story, all the same story beats and everything, except it all involves someone you already know. It could be the exact same storyline, but instead of Wook Lamont as the potential Dawn Servant, it's, I don't know, Uriange. Hell, even Aaronville would have been better. Or the best possible replacement would be Yishtola, so that my girl actually gets some goddamn character development. It isn't just the Deus Ex Magica whenever they need. She'll get development and like the next expansion, probably. Oh my God. She has been getting set up for things. If it was someone like the eternal. Be I'm sorry. It's, it's not a, it's not a like. Awful thing to be irritated with at this point. Cause yes, yeah, she still hasn't had a lot of development since Shadowbringers, but it's like, she's been busy. We've been focusing on other things. She ain't got time to be in front of the camera. She's been off screen researching to get back to Runar. Beautiful grace of Yishtola. There's immediate attachment, personal involvement, and potential conflict within herself and other scions. It's just another example of how weak of a protagonist Wook Lamad is. Even if her actual personality is very enjoyable and nice to see, she doesn't have the conviction to carry the main plot on her shoulders. And that could be fine because she would be a fantastic support character with her charm, but she was not meant for the spotlight. There was a recent unofficial character popularity poll in Japan, and after 17,000 votes, they showed the top 10 favorite characters of Dawn Trail. Wook Lamott doesn't even crack the top 10. There are characters that only get like 20 minutes of screen time that beat her. I'm tired of getting these single-serving NPCs that are going to be completely ignored come the next expansion pack. Yoshi P did not cook with Dawn Trail's story. Those dungeons are still sublime, and they are some fantastic raids, but this is the biggest snooze fest 14 has ever had. I She's sleeping in libraries too. I would rather replay a Realm of Born <laughs> story again than sit through this one. I sincerely really indicative of what to expect with their story content and expansions moving forward because it might be dull enough for me to actually cancel my subscription. It is. I I I'm so I I'm not buying. Someone thinks that a Realm Reborn is more compelling than Dawn Trail. I I I need to see a proper. I I need a video essay to form my opinion on this, so I can.
make a, an actual judgment call. That sounds wild to me to even entertain a Realm Reborn is more compelling than Don Trail because I, I, I don't, I don't, I, I disagree. I, I just on all fronts disagree. <laughs> but no, yeah, she's been sleeping in libraries. Like we've seen how busy she's been. It's, I don't think that there's any chance for her to. <sighs> be in a situation where it's like yeah she she has time to be at the forefront of the plot at all but she, she doesn't i don't think she does i really don't but I, that was that was a solid video but it, it, it i disagree with a lot of it but it's like i, I do agree with the wukomat isn't the most compelling main character but it's i don't think she needs to be compelling that I, I don't have a counter argument for it other than that i just don't think she needs to be that compelling i think she's purposefully justified and it, not just in narrative but with what the needs of the story are at this point to kind of be a character that's like yeah we're just kind of along for the ride right now while we set up a bunch of stuff because now that we have the Azim key and everything, it's like, what what's coming up next? Because I feel like we're going to become the focus again. But even then, it's... I don't know if we'll be the focus as the Warrior of Light. I feel like it's will be the focus as Azim's kind of reincarnation. And our focus will be back at the macro level of things, like we were in A Realm Reborn for a minute. And we kind of already were with that. We were kind of already at that, that macro level again through this expansion, but I don't know if, I don't know if they'll maintain that, but no, it's, I, I don't know. I feel like a lot of the complaints for Don Trell are coming from it, it just the normal bullshit we see from from like the loudest parts of communities online. So just a lot of entitlement of like, I want my cake now, God damn it. What do you mean? I got to watch you get the bowl out and put the flour in the bowl and then put the eggs and the butter and the, the milk and like, uh, you got to beat it all up. And then you got to like, what do you, you got to preheat the oven and like, you got just give me the cake now. Why give it time. Enjoy the story. Sorcerer's Stone is not the strongest Harry Potter movie. Fellowship is not the strongest Lord of the Rings movie. It's really good, but it's not the law. Fellowship is probably a bad comparison because Fellowship is pretty good. Um, uh, Game of Thrones episode one is not the most compelling episode of Game of Thrones. We're going to just pretend in my hypothetical right now, it, it did not end the way it did in season eight, but I digress. Like, just give it time. A New Hope isn't the strongest Star Wars film. Which one's episode one? Is it A New Hope? Phantom Menace is episode one. But yeah, no, if we're talking about the like original trilogy, yeah. New Hope isn't that isn't that strong. Like I'm I'm not a big fan of Star Wars, but even I'll at least say that. Like it's good, yes, but it's not the strongest. Like give it time. You know what makes a new hope interesting? Context. You know what makes Don Troll interesting? Probably context. And if in two years I'm wrong, because I'll still be streaming. Uh, we can laugh at me <laughs> being a very confident moron. <laughs>